Hello, my name is Caleb Graham, and today I'm going to be sharing a look at my project titled Digital Journalism, Connecting to the News. After much research of journal articles, reading through the book The Elements of Journalism by Bill Kovac and Tom Rosenstiel, as well as corresponding with a working digital journalist, in this project I'm going to be looking at what digital journalism looks like in today's society, as well as how news organizations are continuously adapting to the digital world and the demand from audiences for engageable content. The purpose of this presentation is to provide a brief look at the definition of digital journalism, how the public prefers to consume their news, the concern of fake news, and what journalists are doing to become more engaged with their audiences. Now, in order to define digital journalism, we first need to look at the definition of journalism itself. Now, Encyclopedia Britannica defines journalism as the collection, preparation, and distribution of news. This also would include um, related commentary, feature materials, and they would all be produced in print or electronic media such as newspapers, magazines, books, blogs, webcasts, podcasts, social networking, social media sites, email, pretty much anywhere where you can consume news, as well as through radio and motion pictures and television. Now at its core, Journalism as a public service should be objective and unbiased, providing people with the information that they need in order to govern their daily lives. In the 25 years or so since the digital revolution began, both scholars and experts in journalism have yet to really come to a common consensus or a common definition on what exactly digital journalism is, or in some cases, what it should even be called. But in the simplest terms, digital journalism is journalism that is practiced on a digital medium. Now this would include things such as websites, it would include digital radio and television, it would also include social media and podcasting. Now, 30 years ago, one of the primary sources for getting the daily news was by reading a newspaper. Now, with the rise of the digital world, people are using the internet instead of picking up a newspaper. In 2018, the Pew Research Center did a survey study of about 35,000 Americans to see where they primarily consume their news. Now, as you can see, in the graph, television still ranks as the top choice at 41%, but just behind it at a very close second, 37% um, is online content. So that would include all the things that I mentioned before with websites and social media, etc. cetera. Um, but print news has fallen to 13% and radio to only 8%. Now, there are certainly some areas that are slower to adapt. When I spoke with a digital content producer at a television station in Montana, they informed me that the majority of their viewers are still choosing to watch their newscast live on television, um, and they write in or they call the station as a way to communicate instead of using their social media channels. Now here locally, close to where I live in Florida, there's a community called The Villages, and they have a website, but they uh, prefer to focus more on their printed newspaper um, for their particular demographic. Now, in my hometown in Alabama, uh, similar to Montana, people are still watching their local newscasts, but they also like to read their news on Facebook as well. One of the biggest concerns in the world of journalism today is the issue of fake news. Now, while this term is fairly new in the last several years, the public's concerns with accuracy, trust, and bias in the news media has existed for decades. However, experts say that social media and the ability for 
anyone and everyone for that matter to create quote unquote news plays a big role in the magnification of fake news. In their book, The Elements of Journalism, Kovac and Rosenstiel point out that the public largely still expects the news to be produced by skilled professionals. What disappoints them is that the news has not lived up to those promises. Now, a recent example of public concern over fake news comes amid the global coronavirus pandemic that we are currently facing. Another recent Pew Research Center survey of American adults shows that the percentages of people who believe that something they have heard or read in regards to COVID-19 from their primary news source of choice seems to be completely made up or false. Now, the majority of those Americans, which is 57%, according to the graph, primarily use social media to get their news, and they believe that they have seen or read false information shared about the coronavirus outbreak on social media. Now, close behind that, at 49%, is another digital form, which is news websites and apps. And what this data is telling us is that a majority of Americans feel that the digital sources in which they turn to as their choice for news are producing false information. A question one cannot help but ask in this conversation is, how do we fix fake news? Now, when I asked the digital content producer I spoke with in Helena, Montana, they believe that accountability is the key. At this particular station, the news director verifies and signs off on all of the stories that the reporters produce. So often, they're even required to provide um, or quote-unquote show their work in order to get the okay for that particular story to be published. In the Elements of Journalism book, Kovac and Rosenstiel believe that fake news should be addressed by news literacy amongst the public. Now, in their view, the public needs to be more well-trained, uh, more well-educated in how to identify not only false stories but hearsay or propaganda when they are consuming their news online. Another hot topic in the conversation of digital journalism among scholars currently is what I like to call journalist and audience engagement. Now, studies are showing that, yes, the majority of Americans believe their local journalists are in touch with the community. However, they rarely really see them out and about or even speak with them. Now, since research does show that Americans are turning more to social media for their news, reporters are now beginning to turn more to social media to get ideas for their stories. And this not only provides more interaction with the community, but also allows the public to become more engaged with the stories that matter to them. This also helps journalists understand which stories the public cares more about, and those stories may receive more follow-up than if there was no interest whatsoever. Journalists are also even looking at developing more interactive technology to connect with people in the form of not only virtual reality, but also news games. Now, the end goal here is to not only become more engaging with the audience, but to also help rebuild their trust in journalism. Digital journalism is changing the face of journalism of the past by creating a community where reporters and their audiences are taking part in a continuous conversation like never before. While the public now mostly prefers online content, they also continue to have concerns with the credibility of some of that online content. As a result, journalists are looking at ways to regain the trust of their audiences through innovative digital technology, which will even further see us connecting to the news.